Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, today we are gonna have a pairing of our Idotheli mirror, the dwarf blue-footed baboon. Now, as the name suggests, these guys are a dwarf spider, and our female is only around about two and a half, three inches. She's not very big at all. And um, you'll see the difference in these videos with the males and the females. He is of a similar size to her, but much more finely built. She's a big, heavy, chunky spider in comparison. So um, yes, we've had mixed, mixed things with the Idotheli Mira. Now we've had many slings that we've uh, picked up in the past, and they've all turned out to be males. Um, I think we had one female out of all of it, and we lost her, unfortunately. Um, she she died halfway through. Um, she was like just reaching maturity, I think, when she died, for no apparent reason. So we just didn't know what it was. And um, all the rest have been males. So we then decided, we would have, you would have seen the video when we got this girl and we unboxed her. Uh, this is a female that we bought in as an adult. And um, we then started our search for a male. Now we managed to procure a couple of males because they're quite difficult to get hold of. They sort of like go in spasms where there's none, then all of a sudden there's a few of them get offered up for sale, then there's none of them at all for months on end. And um, we literally saw a couple come up, so we, we went in and we got them. Um, unfortunately, neither of them lasted more than about three days. So we bought two males, and within three days, we'd lost both of them. Um, as to why this happens, no idea whatsoever. Um, really can't fathom it out. So we're not sure. We're, um, maybe they were older than we thought. We don't know. But they, we lost them. Now, when we went to the BTS recently, the British Tarantula Society show, um, we had one there that we picked up, a fresh male. And um, it's from a chap that I actually speak to on Facebook, and I've forgotten his name. It's gone clean out of my mind. I've forgotten his name. Yes, but he was working on so, uh, on um, with Chris on Tarantula Room. I can't think. Oh, I'm very very sorry. I am terrible with names. I am terrible. But we took a male from him, and uh, he assured us that it's actually a freshly matured male, and um, we no reason to disbelieve him. And sure enough, this male, he's been in there, he's done the job, he's still around with us now, and um, and he will be going in and having a second go. So. Um, We've got some high hopes for this. And uh, all right, without further ado, let's have a look and see what that little fella got up to. Well, today we're gonna to pair our Idotheli Mira, the blue, blue foot baboon. Now this is, um, this is a dwarf species of uh, baboon spider and as with the baboons, this one is uh, found in South Africa and is really quite a popular spider within the hobby. Now this is our little male and as you can see we've just popped him in. Now one of the interesting things about the, um, the bluefoot baboon is that it is one of only two spiders found in the genera of Theraphosides that actually build a trapdoor. Uh, the other one that it shares this unique behaviour with is the Celadonia, which many of you have known and seen. It's a really, really colourful little trapdoor spider. Very, very popular. And uh, yeah, they really are a stunning little spider. Now the dwarf bluefoot baboon shares that same trait. And these guys build a trapdoor. And it's, uh, I think it's one of the only ones of... Um, true sort of tarantulas that actually do this. Hey, we popped our male in and um, you can see there he's busy trying to get down into that moss and just about make out his blue feet. Look at them feet, absolutely stunning. These really are a pretty little spider. Absolutely gorgeous little spiders.
Now, once they're fully grown, a female, her very, very largest will be around about four inches or so, maybe four and a half inches. That would be a monster for this species. And our males, they tend to run out around about three inches, whereas this one is actually quite small. He's, um, he's, he's probably two and a half inches, maybe just about making three inches. You can see that beautiful gold carapace on him and the gold on his legs. These really are incredible spiders. Now you can see he's feeling and he's tapping away all the time here. He's very, very interested in this piece of moss. Now this may well be because our female's tunnel may well be underneath that moss. So he's literally, he's probably looking for the entrance. He's trying to find out where she's going to be hiding. You can see there, look, he's trying to, trying to dig down into it. We've never seen a spider, even fossorial spiders, that have been so preoccupied in an area of moss. You can see him shaking away there. He's sending out signals to her. He knows she's close by. Now, we haven't had a lot of luck with this particular species in the past. Um, we've bought many slings, and the majority of them, um, well, pretty much all of them, I think, bar one, have uh, matured into males. And then, of course, when you want a male, they're incredibly difficult to get hold of. So we were lucky enough, we picked this one up. Um, we got this one at uh, the BTS. Uh, he came in. Now, other males that we bought, when I say we've had bad luck, we bought our males, and they've only ever lasted two or three days and then killed over and died. Now, we're not quite sure why this might be. Now, we're a good couple of weeks after the BTS now, and um, our male here is still going strong. He was actually freshly malted out. So, um, come from a trusted source. And uh, he's he's proving to be really good. So we've had difficulties with them. Our female, we bought her as, as an adult female uh, some months ago, and you would remember we'd done the video on her. Now, um, we only ever had one other female, um, and she reached maturity and then died for no apparent reason. And, um, yeah, we just... Couldn't quite work her out. Now this one's doing well. It's growing strong. And one of the things I think is because often or not these guys are kept pretty dry. We've done the opposite. We've we've she's dry on the top, but it's quite moist underneath. And we think this might just be the turning point. They seem to do much much better with a high sense of moisture within the soil than dry up on top. As you can see, there it's pretty dry up top. Now you see our male now, he's um he's giving up on the moss a little bit. Oh no, yep, yeah, we're gonna go and have a little venture now. Try and find out where this girl's hiding. He's been continuously tapping and shaking away. There you go, you see him tapping away. You see Zamboli there on the end of the pedipalps. That tiny little like red shiny flash. You see he's tapping well now on the piece of cork bark. She is, in fact, underneath there somewhere. That's the entrance to her, her burrow is down in the front of that piece of cork park. So hopefully she is receiving the signals. Oh, we have a bit of movement. Here she comes. Here she comes. Look at that. Very responsive. Look at our male. He's super excited. And there she is. Look at that. Nice big plump abdomen on this female. Now she hasn't long malted either. So she, she apparently malted um, just before she came to us. So she should be in a good condition to actually to pair up. Now we've given her a couple of good meals. She settled in. She built a trapdoor pretty much straight away. Within 24 hours of her being in the enclosure, she had built a trapdoor. She'd come rushing out for food. And uh, yeah, she settled in very nicely. Now, as we can see there, 
She's holding herself up. See them tiny, tiny little faint movements from our male. He's in a good position here. He's got the upper ground. Now, when we see that frantic movement from the uh, pedipalps of our male, quite often or not, he is actually just stroking the underside of her carapace. See that faint shaking from our male? These are all signals to the female of his intentions. Now, she actually put herself in a position there to give him a little bit more room. Now you can see there she's also exactly the same colouring as our male. She's just like a larger form. You see the blue on her feet? Beautiful. These really are a pretty spider. Now, it's always interesting to, to try and fathom out what is going on at these moments where they literally just hold one another. Oh, look at that. There we go. We have insemination there. You can see that body, angle of the body, how he's literally pulled her through. We can see one pedipalp, but the other one has gone. There you go. That was a good insemination. He's maintained contact. She's still remaining nice and relaxed. You can see how the frantic tapping brings her back into condition. You can also just about see there behind that foot, you can just about see her epigastric furrow from where it was a little bit extended. Now this is often showing the, um, the viability of our female. She is more than ready to, to pair. She's being a little crafty at the moment. She's holding her abdomen at a slightly different angle. That's making it difficult for our male to reach through. Look at those legs on the female. Looks like she's wearing makeup. What a lovely blue. Now, our female has actually changed her stance a little bit now. As you can see there, she's laying quite flat. See, now he's talked her into raising up again. Look at the throbbing from our female. She's absolutely just rocking from side to side. Almost looks like breathing. There you go, he's pushed her again. And as you can see there, he's not trying to reach underneath her at the moment. He's literally just positioning her. He's just getting her up above, off the cork bark. Gives that final little thrust. There we go. Insemination again. You can just see, that you can clearly see the, the emboli working there. The pedipalp was right on, on the mark. Now we're seeing also as well that these inseminations are they're um, they're quite strong inseminations, but fairly quick. And it looks like we're settling down again. We have a little bit of a rest. You see how he he taps with that really really quick movement that lifts her up again. There you go. She's oh, she's coming forward now. She's she's putting a little bit of little bit of force into the situation. So interesting the rocking sensation that our female is giving. It's almost like like heavy breathing. The way her body is moving. So it's her fangs are very relaxed. There we go. Another insemination there. You can clearly see that there. That was very good. 
So that's now three, maybe four inseminations we've had so far. And he is still game. She's still quite happy to uh, carry on with this situation. It's very intriguing. That sort of throbbing we're seeing from our female. Now, interestingly there, we can see there that she actually arched her body, even though he couldn't quite, he wasn't even anywhere near her then, but she arched her body then. Here we go. Not sure if he managed it then. It looked like he almost had it. That's very cool that these spiders actually came out into the open and we've got this beautiful close-up footage. Very, very close and personal. And this is what we try to achieve with, um, with our pairing videos. We want to be right on in there and seeing all the action as close as possible. As we can see, they're, um, oh, man, it's very, very relaxed. Very relaxed. I think with these guys, it's, it's, the, it's the subtle movements. You can see where he's lifted that leg off the floor, and there was very, very subtle movements there. We just love to know what they're saying to one another. The intriguing world of spider, spider fornication. You can see there then this, he was back on with the shaking. It's interesting how he shakes two, three times, then he moves. Does the same again, he rests and he shakes two, three times. Very, very subtle movements. Here you go, there he's off again. Interesting how we can see that the actual angle of her body, how she changes it in comparison to the movements that he produces. Fabulous stuff. If you watch it backwards um, and, uh, and watch it over and over again, you, you can slowly see with these pairings the slightly different things that our male does, which our female responds to in certain ways. And this is how we tend to learn and try and understand what is going on with our spiders. So we can see that um, if our male gives a certain throb, a certain kick of the leg or whatever, um, this often creates a, a tuned response from our female. And if we watch it time and time again, we can actually see the, um, the mirror image in their movements throughout the pairing. And this is how we try and understand what they're actually saying to one another. Um, and what's going on. There you go, he's reached back through again now. He looks to still be in contact there, it's quite interesting, but we're not seeing that real violent angle of the female's body, which is normally where our male has penetrated and he is actually pulling her towards him. Nice to have such a relaxed pairing where we're not entirely panicking on our male getting munched. These seem to be very compatible. Now you'll notice how the tempo has changed. Things have slowed down a little bit. We're, we're still maintaining contact. We, we're keeping in there. But we'll see, you see how it's really, really slowed down, which suggests that maybe our male is getting near the end. I mean, after all, he has inseminated her maybe five or six times now. He could be looking for a way out. 
Looks how she's pushing on him now. She's actually getting some severe leverage with them back legs. What we have to ask the question is, is this because of the angle she is on the bark or is this because of her intentions are changing? Still getting that throbbing from the male. Here you go, he's back in there. We didn't have an insemination then. Notice how she's holding herself up very, very high. She's actually rolling her abdomen as well, which is quite an interesting thing. Here we go, he's talking about, here we go. Oh, and he's off. Oh, <laughs> just her abdomen just fall down then. Now it looked like that was his last insemination. And as we were saying, the tempo was sort of slowly changing. It was slowly getting a little bit slower and slower. Notice how she's literally just sat there. She seems quite happy. We saw no aggression from this female. Absolutely perfect. Well, hopefully we've got some very good inseminations and hopefully an exact on the way. We may well try him one more time just to see. There's no harm in trying. Look at the blue on those legs. This is what makes these spiders so popular. Fabulous little spiders. Really pleased to have them in the collection. And hopefully we can manage to breed this species. The dwarf trapdoor spider. And there she goes, look at that. Lifts the door up. Away she goes, never to be seen again. They're not a spider you see a great deal of. Marvellous. Well, that was quite exciting. And some very strange behavior we saw there as well. Now, you would have seen there, when we put our male in, he was so, so preoccupied with this piece of moss area. And he kept trying to sort of dig it up and he kept going over it, walk away, he'd come back to it, he'd look at it again. Makes me wonder whether her tunnel actually goes underneath that piece of moss. And maybe he was feeling vibrations from her. She may well have been responding underground. We will never know. And this is one of the things with your fossorial spiders. We cannot tell what our female is up to because we can't see her. She is dug in there, buried, never going to see her. So we have to re rely on what our male is telling us to try and piece together the story as to what is going on. Now, he probably spent, I don't know, a good half hour mucking around on that piece of bark, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. He came over, he checked the water bowl out, he went back. He didn't stop to have a drink or anything, he just went back and he was still in there trying it. So we sort of cut that short a little bit, and um, and then you saw him move over to the back, and he went onto the bark and he came round, and then she came out of her burrow. Now if I take my lid off of this enclosure now, because these are a fossorial spider, they are a trapdoor spider, and if you come over and have a look here, you can see that this here, just here, this is her trapdoor, just there. Now there's a good chance that her burrow can run either down here or it runs over here. It might well have ended up underneath that piece of moss. But that there is the trapdoor, just there. Now these guys are a very popular spider within the hobby, considering they are a trapdoor spider. And we don't really see much of them. So we only ever see them when they feed and also at pairing times when we've got an absolutely fantastic look. We've got some beautiful footage of these guys, some really up close personal footage, which is what we try to do with our pairing. We like to get really in there, right into the nitty gritty and see exactly what's going on. Now, um, you would have seen there, she's much chunkier than him. She's got a fair bit of weight in comparison to him. Our males are always spindly. They are designed for speed. They need to get away. Whereas our females, she's designed the other way. She's got to produce the offspring. So she carries a little bit more substance about her. Now, um, you would have seen there, there was a little bit of backwards and forwards in and all the rest of it, but we didn't see any aggression from our female. She was good as gold. She really was a, a lovely, you know, compliant female. She came straight out of that trapdoor. 
it always amazes me. You sit there, you're looking at the scene, the male is there doing his thing, and then all of a sudden, the ground opens up and out comes this beautiful, beautiful spider, you know? And then blue feet, amazing blue feet. They absolutely are stunning. They look like they've been painted on. Fantastic looking spiders. Now, hopefully, we, we got a good, good, solid insemination there, and hopefully, this girl will now produce um, an egg sac. Obviously, though, the problem we have now is we will never know. This is the answer. You know, this is the question now. We will never know if she's actually produced an egg sac. So what do we do? You know, what's the answer? Well, I tell you, absolutely nothing. We do absolutely nothing. What we do now is we put her up on the shelf. We keep her nice and quiet. We make sure that her water bowl is, is filled up. So she's got water. She knows exactly where that water bowl is. So if needs be, if she's thirsty, she can come out, probably do it over night time. She will come out, take a drink, go back down again. And she will be in there. Now, in terms of um, hydration, we, when we fill the water bowl up, we can overflow it a little bit. So some of that moisture goes down into the soil. We can also squirt some water down the front here. This in turn will come through the soil and it will help to keep everything nice and moist. The actual um, thing inside there is nice and moist in there already. So what we're doing is looking at just maintaining that. Because we've got an open, we've got a, a mesh top, it's gonna to evaporate really, really easily. So we need to stay on top of that. And then all, we, all it is then really is a case of wait and see. We might end up waiting for six months. You know, we just don't know. The only time we are gonna know what's happened is when hopefully she opens it up and we see a baby. A nice little sling come crawling out. That will be the icing on the cake for us and it will be worth the wait. The only other option is maybe she might turf out a malt and then we know it's all been in vain and we've got to start again. But what an absolute journey to go on. Normally with our other spiders, we get to see an egg sac and we take a date from that egg sac then we know that we can pull it at 30, 35 days or so for, for most of them, the majority of them. Um, with these, we won't be pulling the egg sac. She will hatch that out herself. Same as the, um, the golden blue leg baboons, the Harpicterus, they do the same. We leave them with the egg sac. Um, I don't know of any, any kind of literature or anything that's ever suggested that these guys have had an egg sac removed and it's been viable. So we just leave them to it. Let nature take its course and see what happens. Right, well, fingers crossed, we stay patient, and you guys too. And as soon as we get news on this, you'll be the first to know. Right, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys.